Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. We record the show every week as we are doing today, and that is then posted to our archives um, afterwards. I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both uh, the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all types of libraries. Um, so you will find things on our show for public libraries, K-12, universities, academics, uh, museums, corrections, basically anything that's a library has one thing library related, you'll possibly find a topic on our, we're very broad. That's really our only focus is libraries in general. Um, and so we have a mixture of things too, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products that we think might be of interest or useful to libraries. So um, you should definitely be able to find something. Uh, sometimes that we have guest speakers that come in from um, um, outside of the Library Commission, outside of Nebraska, you know, in Nebraska, but outside of Nebraska sometimes. And sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations. Um, sometimes those are focused on things we offer here specifically as a commission. Um, but that's what we actually have today is with me, Mary Sowers. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Krista. And she is from the Library Commission, our uh, <laughs> government information services librarian here. Um, and this morning, obviously, we're going to talk about the census. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah, yay! <laughs> it's coming. It's ha it's happening. Yes, actually, it's um, happening very quickly. Yes, uh, and um, what you need to, should know about it at your library, things that will help you deal with mm -hmm. what's going to be coming and 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 whatnot. So absolutely, um, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Mary. Just let's see here. Okay. Um, to take it away and tell us all everything we need to know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll try to do my best with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> I'll be okay. honest. There is a lot of information out there that that's very confusing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my aim here today is to try to narrow uh, and winnow a lot of that um, information down to uh, the basics of what you need to know and then resources that you can access if mm -hmm we don't answer your questions today. Yeah. So, um, here we go. <laughs> um, I have included things from the United States Census Bureau, um, the ALA libraries in the 2020 census, and uh, things, uh, and obviously this is sponsored by Nebraska Library Commission. Um, just a very brief history of the mm -hmm. census. Um, it, any of you who have not been reading my blog posts um, you know, where I've broken down um, by decade the history of the census. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, those yeah. posts are really cool. Yeah, I, yes, they I are. haven't been able to read all of them, but it's so interesting. Like every, I don't know how often you put, are they a weekly? Or well, it started out weekly, week. and yeah. now I've been doing two or three a week mm -hmm. just to stay on top of it because I wanted to do one every week leading up to the actual census day. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so we're getting down to yeah. the, to the uh, uh, census day. It's which very is interesting. April 1st. Yeah, yeah. You, don't, you never knew about or never thought. So, oh, yeah, take absolutely. A look at yes. The blog post about that on our on our website. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you're interested in seeing the whole series, uh, just go to nlc.nebraska.gov and uh, type in history of the census, and you'll find all the blog posts. Um, beginning in 1790 was our first census uh, taking um, as uh, prescribed by the Founding Fathers in the Constitution every 10 years um, the U.S. is supposed to conduct a census. Now the very first one was very basic and it was mainly the uh, uh, free white males, free white females, and slaves. That's the basics for, for that very first one. And uh, so not a whole lot, well, first there weren't a lot of whole, a uh, whole lot of people <laughs> in the country at that time, yeah. you know, but it, it was pretty brief, mm -hmm. you know, and then gradually every 10 years, something was added, you know, to those. 
um, where it expanded on what was needed. Like, for example, the next couple, it started including children in the home. And so originally it was just adults. Uh, yes, it originally adults. it was just adults. Uh -huh. um, well, not necessarily. Um, free white males might include children, male children, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and free white females <laughs> might include children too. Uh, but still, it's very basic. But then the the ones as they went along would add age groups uh, uh, to include you know, children, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And then um, again, gradually, uh, more and more as they began to realize how important the census information was, they would add uh, more questions. Um, and like, for example, country of birth, um, what the occupation of the household, of the head of the household was, or the wife, you know, if there was a wife involved, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And um, that brings us pretty much to today where they um, ask, where they use all of this information um, to determine counts for manufacturing, mm -hmm. population, housing, you name it, you know, these census statistics populate a lot of information. You know, so, so much that it's used for, and not just yes. by the government, but by other organizations yes. being able to know businesses yes. and communities and organizations. Oh, there's this many of this type of people here. Yeah, we need to do something. Exactly. For them, right. For whatever. And it definitely does drill down all the way down to the town. Mm -hmm. You know, to oh, yeah. you know the town, city, village. You know, whatever. So that um, city officials can use that information. Mm -hmm. um, in helping their communities, yep. you know, so it's very important information. And that being said, um, to best achieve a fair, accurate, and complete count, it is vital that we get as many people mm -hmm. as possible to respond to the survey and to the census questionnaire. Um, and that's where libraries are, are so important is because Libraries tend to get a large amount of people coming through their doors that they can um, talk to mm -hmm. about the census and advertise the census to um, and help, you know, once it comes down to the actual filling of the questionnaire. And I will get down to that a little bit later. That's something I think that libraries have a lot of experience with from other Oh, absolutely. Um, things that, that um, people come in all the time. I need to uh, apply for a job online. Yes. I need to apply for my unemployment on the other <laughs> Yes, <laughs> exactly. Health agents, whatever. And I think we've got a lot of that just on, on our feet experience with let yes. me help you get to the right place. Let me show you how yes. to click on the right button to do the thing. And it's, we've been doing this for years anyways. And this is just another uh, thing that people need to go online and do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Librarians are definitely experts in helping people find information. <laughs> <laughs> and the census is, is just one more thing. You know, like, for example, I was thinking of the Affordable Care Act of just yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. Librarians were huge. Libraries and librarians were huge in helping uh, people get to that information. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's... Uh, the census is one more thing that libraries and uh, librarians can help get to. Mm -hmm. So census results uh, will allocate billions of dollars. And that's one thing we just cannot stress enough in getting people to respond is the more people that respond, um, the more the government, our federal government will, and down to the state and local governments, will know how to allocate that money you know, to the programs that are needed in the various communities. So um, that's why I say uh, they will allocate billions of dollars in federal funding to state and local communities over the next 10 years. So the census mm -hmm. that is uh, information that's gathered this year will um, impact mm -hmm. the whole country for the next yeah, 10 years. Decade, and yeah. that's just one more way of saying why it's so important. You know. So it is really local. I mean, this is, they know a lot of people are, you know, well, it's the government, it's just for yes, them. Exactly. No, it's not. It no. comes down to what is your town going to get to yes. help to provide, you know, um, federal funding for your town to do things, but then yes. also for your local community leaders, your your mayor, your city council to know. Absolutely. This is who is in our town and here's how we can now help serve them better. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, if you already have federal programs that your uh, community is taking advantage of, 
the federal funding impacts those programs, right. you know, and a lot of people don't realize that. <clears throat> they need to know that that's where the money needs to go to. Yes, exactly. And this is how it gets there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, um, census results also determine representation, yes. um, not only in Congress, you know, obviously at the federal level, but also state and legislatures local. and mm -hmm. local governments, you know, so um, all of these entities use census information, census results uh, to determine a lot of factors. So um, it's just super <laughs> important. <laughs> so we've got to get the word out or continue to get the word out. And in order to make it easy for everyone, this year is huge in the history of the census because for the first time ever, um, in the three main ways to respond to the census, it will be available to do online. Mm -hmm. You can do it from your home computer. You can do it from a library computer. You can do it from your phone or your tablet or your laptop. Anywhere you've got an internet connection, um, you can respond to the census. Um, so the first main way that the census is pushing is online. You can respond online at my2020census.gov. And, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to ask you that earlier. Um, and I'm going to click on it so that you know, you know what it looks like. And this will take just a second. I had noticed this morning that it was a little bit of a lag time. Uh, so this is. So the site's up right now, but you can't start responding until tomorrow. Uh, yes, so that that's correct. Um, actually, uh, beginning tomorrow, March 12th through March 20th, households in the United States will be, be uh, receiving, starting to receive their uh, invitation card, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, in the mail regarding uh, responding to the census online. And I'm not sure why this is not yeah. responding, but um, essentially at my2020census.gov, um, it comes up with. Um, Let's try this. Sure. Uh, hit escape, and we'll. Sure. We're going to do this. The, there oh. we go. Oh, of course, as soon as we decide. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there okay, we go. There. <laughs> this, okay, when you or your patrons go to my2020census.gov, this is what you will see. And it has a little bit of a welcome, you know, for um, and um, getting started, but they have purposely kept it brief. Um, in general, I've been told that filling it out should only take anywhere from uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes at the most. In general, it's about 15 minutes. But um, you know, if you if you want to just take your time, it does. You're not being timed or anything like that. Um, and then uh, you just click on my start the questionnaire. Now, the important thing about the card that you're going to get in the mail is there is a 12-digit census ID found on the card or the materials sent to the houses, mm -hmm. um, and you need that code to do this online. But um, it comes up right away. Please log in, use the materials we mailed you, and fill in the code right down here. And I see <clears throat> at the top there's a actually just uh, there's a, a bar showing where you're at in it, a yes. verification. So this code is related to your the mailing address. The yes, address, that is not correct. Like a code for you as a no, 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 it's no. It's a code for your house. No. Yeah, or absolutely. Your building or yes. your apartment number. Or yeah, that's okay. correct. That is, cool. it's essentially your location. Right. Not okay. necessarily, yeah. um, it, it is nothing like a social security number. And it, in fact, that is the one thing that the census will never do is they will never ask you for a social security yeah. number. They will never ask you for a credit card number. Mm -hmm. um, nothing like that, you know, and uh, that was, that's one thing I want to be sure and uh, emphasize here too is um, I know there have been some concerns you know with people doing this online um, about the security of their information mm -hmm. and it is illegal by federal law for the census to use any of that information that you provide as a person um, it is only for abstract statistics mm -hmm. you know so 
your answers are secure. They will never be shared, you know, your personal information never shared with anybody, only the statistical information. Mm -hmm. So, um, and because I don't have my code, I can't actually log in yeah, and do this, yeah. but Krista is right across the top. You can see the types of things that are going to be covered. Um, your address verification is going to be there and that's where the code, you know, correlates. Then they will ask household questions, people questions, and then final questions. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what the final questions are, <laughs> but mainly the household is how many are in your household as of April 1st, um, you know, that type of thing. So, um, you know, um, it, it's really going to be straightforward, easy to answer questions. So does this compare to, um, yeah, we used to have, and I'm assuming we still do have the short form and the long form. That some, you know, there was always the, some people would get the long form right. mail, and some get the short form. How is what is this comparable to? Actually, I think there is going to be a quote unquote longer form, uh -huh. but not much longer. And uh -huh. um, there, my understanding is that there are a there is going to be a sampling, kind of a random sampling of the long form actually mailed to the houses. Okay, so, um, so that, that paper you know, thing remember from, yeah, if exactly. you remember from 10 years ago doing these things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 10 years yeah. ago it was all paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, um, if you do get a card in the mail you know, starting tomorrow, um, you can use that to uh, respond online. And we'll also get to uh, some other um, pieces of that. Um, as we go along. Um, the next main way that you can respond um, to the census is by phone. And you can get assistance or respond by phone completely, you know, answer the questionnaire online or um, by phone um, starting, and actually that started on Monday, uh, March 9th. And uh, there are toll free telephone numbers. Go ahead. Yes. And um, if I remember correctly, these toll-free numbers are at 2020census.gov, and which will also be at the end. Um, this is this the PDF that should be open. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, hit escape. Let's see if it popped up in the bottom somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Hmm. That's interesting. It may, we did recently, this may be a conversation to have with our computer people here at the Library Commission. <laughs> we yes. did just recently have our computers updated. So yes. there may be some things that are still <laughs> um, not. But when, I, I should mention this too while we're talking about this, um, while we're having this issue. Um, when their archive is available for today's show, we will have the, um, the PowerPoint presentation available for you as well. So you'll be able to access these links from there when you're, um, yes, when that's you correct. Afterwards as yeah, well. yeah, that's but correct. as I said, too, yeah, can we, is it just a thing on the census page? Yeah. Well, and I'm beginning to wonder if maybe um, oh, the they yeah they've um, or because well since directly it came right up so I don't know but um, let's see if I can. there's a how to respond yes is, there is. they have a, okay ways to respond. That's it. Okay. okay. This is going to be probably uh, either the first or second most important website that you will use mm -hmm. um, it, that you can help your patrons with, and it is 2020census.gov. Super simple to e remember. Bookmark it. All you have to do is click on it, mm -hmm. and you can get the facts, um, and I'll go through some of this, but just back to where we were earlier, ways to respond. Um, the telephone numbers should be listed here. Let's see, did they? No, they haven't. When, video guide, different timelines. <laughs> okay, they are not completely up and running yet. Um, and I may have gotten that from ALA. But anyway. Um, oh, the PDF, yeah. Yes. And I apologize for, let me see. No, no, that's email. Okay. 
Um, for some reason, the PDF with the telephone numbers is not working, but um, we'll and, figure that out before we get the archive yeah. up for you, so you'll yeah, have the right link. That's correct. Yeah, we'll yeah. check that and track it down later. Not a problem. Okay, and then the third way, at least the third main way that uh, households will be able to answer the census is by mail. And as I mentioned to uh, Krista earlier, uh, there will be mailed forms out uh, mm -hmm. and those will go out between um, April 8th and 16th. And then lastly, even though it's not considered one of the main ways, if um, by May 13th, a household has not responded to the census, um, starting May 13th, they will, the Census Bureau will send out uh, enumerators, uh, census takers, door-to-door, uh, -door, okay? And so that's why it's so important to either do it online, by phone, or by mail, if at all possible, so that you don't have to have somebody showing up at your door, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, um, they get paid and everything, but it is, you know, a cost, you know, for, for people to come around. But as long as Mm -hmm. uh, people respond to the census, doesn't matter which way, that's all that matters. So, I have a question. So, by sure. now, households receive a paper questionnaire. So, first, you're going to get this little postcard thing that has, well, that has the your code, code to right. the online version. Mm -hmm. But then also, everyone's going to get a paper questionnaire? No, or not necessarily. Okay. Um, I think my understanding is that they are, uh, as people respond online, they're keeping track. And if you did it online, then yes. you don't need that. Yeah, got that's it. Because that's one of the questions was, okay, if I do not answer the census online, will I still receive a paper form? Actually, the answer is, if you don't submit it online, then you will get a paper form yes. because you didn't do it online. That's correct. There's not so they are going to try, yeah. you know, okay. step by step to get you to respond. <clears throat> if you don't buy it online, then you'll get a paper. If you don't get it, if you don't do it by paper, They'll then you'll get somebody. You'll get somebody at your front door. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, so it's a multi-step thing, and yes, balance, it and is. No, yes. Not like multiple answers, which and you can, okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And. Um, and that's the nice thing about computers these days is they can keep track of people, you know, responding and, um, you know, guaranteed it is not a big brother issue. They are just trying to make sure as many people as possible respond, mm -hmm. not who specifically, but as many people as possible. And so they're, they're working through the process mm -hmm. and they keep track and then, you know, send out as necessary, you know, either Excellent. by yeah. mail or. So we have a question sure. about a different survey, which we know about the American community survey, yes. which is done in between the censuses. That's every correct. Year. Mm -hmm. And the person online says, um, 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 I received an American uh, community survey and already and completed that. Uh -huh. Should we expect? Um, yes. So <laughs> we are, are we are now, I guess the question, are we going to now also going to get a census yes, survey? That's okay. correct. It's two yes. totally different things. Yes. Okay. Totally different things. So they do the surveys, American Community Surveys, the same year that they do the census? No, I, I believe it's every, it's every, it's yeah. it's five years, ah, know, okay. if I remember correctly. Yes. So, um, yeah, so this is 2020, so mm -hmm. 2025 they'll be doing mm -hmm. an American Community Survey. And um, they do estimates every year in between. Yes. Whether, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, based on exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And is yeah. there a deadline to respond to the census? Um. I would say or, probably by no later than May 13th. Because <laughs> I know there's, um, well, through, you know, because that's when they're going to start sending people as much as Because I right. know, and you might have this future in your presentation about when that the information is then presented to the, you know, when the census presents these uh, statistics in December or something. Yes, some that's correct. Of, like, yep. by the timeline coming up. So, yes, yeah, there is. And actually, I, I will go through the timeline, okay, you know, cool. as to where so we are I'll now go. and what happens you know, later, After. but okay. you're absolutely right. By the end of the year, all the information is supposed to be sent to the president and Congress. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, and then it will, um, by March 31st of 2021, so March, a year mm -hmm. from now, mm -hmm. um, is when it starts being disseminated to the states. You know, right. And, start working. Yeah, okay. exactly. So the deadline is really going to be, um, as soon as possible. You, yeah, as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. do it. But if you don't do it online, um, and you don't sit in the mail once, someone's going to start coming to your house as of May 13th, yes. and it, they're going to get it done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're going to get it one way or the yeah, other. So, so it's just easier to do it and yeah. do it your way, you know. Sure. Um, so For those of us that don't like 
you know, weird people knock on the door. Well, except for the Girl Scouts who've been coming to oh, my house. yes. Girl Scouts are always yeah. welcome. Um, <laughs> I've bought, like, some three different ones now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do the online ones, nobody comes knocking at your door that you don't want. To. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Um, and in, in broad terms, here are what libraries across the country are doing. Providing Internet access so that mm -hmm. residents can respond online starting March 12th, and that's starting tomorrow. Uh, residents can also opt to respond by phone or mail. Uh, already and I think that's that. a huge thing because we know, especially in our rural states like Nebraska, so many people do not have internet at home. Yes, do not have true. internet or not have good yeah. enough internet at home. To that is like right, that. and that's, that's why it's so problem. important to get the word out in your local community Come for those us, people. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to do this online and. Do it as soon as possible. Come to your local library, you know, and uh, we can provide uh, information on how you can do this. So, um, in another, in, uh, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more specifically, helping job seekers apply for online uh, for 500,000 temporary yeah. census jobs. You know, they need those enumerators. The people that go, yeah, yeah, the people that go door to door. So um, if you're an outgoing person and you like to walk, go around and chit chat with people. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, the, and you can go to um, the 2020census.gov and uh, they have a jobs link at the very top. And this is what it looks like. And it's not too late to apply. So if you, excuse me, if you know someone in your local community who, you know, would really like a temporary job. And if I remember correctly, they're paying pretty well. Yeah. yeah, they are. It's it's right up there, um, you know, more than minimum wage, if I remember correctly. But um, yes, you can you can help your community in um, lots of ways. Oh, hey, there's that. Is that the PDF you're trying to get open before? Um, no, I don't no, think so. Else? Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there's lots of different ways that libraries can help their communities in this census process. Mm -hmm. Um, the other part is informing the public about the 2020 census. So if you are not already, you know, letting people know that this is coming, um, you can let them know um, what their options are for responding, which is what we've already covered, and um, how to avoid misinformation and scams. Um, and that was one thing I was yeah. mentioning earlier is um, if they are truly from the census, they will never ask you for your social security number, your bank account, or money or donations. Never. And if they do, chances are they are not truly from the Census Bureau. Um, and if they do come to your door, um, they should have a badge, a valid um, U.S. Department of Commerce ID badge or Census badge with their photograph. Um, and an expiration date. So if they don't have one of those um, and uh, you are still concerned about your identity after, you know, uh, an encounter like that, be sure to call this 1-800 uh, number. And uh, this is that 1-800 number is something that you can put on maybe a handout, you know, to mm -hmm. your patrons uh, along with other information uh, just in case they have some concerns. Oh, that one keeps popping up. There yeah. we go. Okay. And then uh, the other thing that you can do is partner with local leaders if you're not already. Work with your local governments um, and uh, your local agency uh, leaders mm -hmm. to help reach as many people as possible. And like, for example, your health department and... Um, maybe your chamber of commerce, uh, you know, other leaders in your community are going to know where the hard to reach populations are. Mm -hmm. Talk to them, um, work with them if possible, uh, have them make contact or try to get the word out to those communities that they can come to your library to fill out the census information. And I want to do a little bit more specific. How can my library prepare? Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one, library staff should be familiar with as much census information as possible. And I've shown you a couple of websites that 2020census.gov is probably going to be your first or second most important. Um, but go to that website, familiarize yourself with all of the tabs, 
uh, all of the information uh, located there, um, how to get to the questionnaire, and any related resources to that. So make sure you're familiar with that information so that it's ready. Bookmark it. You know, yeah. make sure it's ready for you at all times. I know um, it's on that on the census, the my census page, which like I said is very clean and simple. Yes, it is. They just had a couple of things at the top, an FAQ and an instructions. Yes. And I was like, oh, instructions. I was wondering, it's going to be like, here's all the questions. I'll you to. That, even that is very simple. Yes, it is. They open up a couple. Of, each one is its own little pop-up window. And it's only a few things. It's not overwhelming. It's not tons of information. It's Correct. the basics of how do I do this? Why am I doing this? Right. Am I required to do this? More information. Um, so there's, you know, really very, it's, I'm, in, I'm honestly, I was very impressed. Very impressed with <laughs> yes. how simple they've made it and not so you know overwhelmed people because right you know those you know we work in libraries who deal with a lot of these kind of online things we know sometimes looking into help and oh and FAQs, no you can get kidding. buried in all yes. the detail yes. this has really been yes brought down to the very bare minimum of just what you need to know in the fewest number of sentences <laughs> right possible. exactly well yeah. you know the Census Bureau has been doing this a long time true and um, they are constantly working and I've seen this in uh, studying the history of the census, mm -hmm. they have constantly been working with how can we make this e as easy as possible mm -hmm. for people. To get more people you know, to do and, it, yeah. and Yes, and so more people will respond. Mm -hmm. And so the feedback that they got for this particular census was keep it simple. Since we're going to mm -hmm. online for the first Especially, time, yeah. keep it simple. <clears throat> just know. being online is going to scare some people. Oh, yes, absolutely. To begin yeah. yeah, I'm nervous. I don't know. I don't do computers very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other... Um, probably number one or two, I would say the 2020census.gov and then this ALA org uh, slash census. Oh, so I've had problems with this link working today. If you just type oh, in okay. ALA.org slash, slash census, um, you've, you will come up to the uh, American Library Association resource page for uh, libraries and the census. Spell it correctly, first of all, I tried to yes. do it wrong. <laughs> and okay, yeah, eventually works, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's on a sub page of advocacy, but it did bring it to it eventually. Yeah. Huh? Okay, okay, good. Um, let's see. Where are we? No, it's not coming up. Close all tabs on that. Okay. Let's just get rid of it. All yeah, there, there we go. go. Yeah. Okay. And then. And actually, if you want to try the. Do the E. I mean, I know it's, oh, it's yeah, the it easiest is. one to get to. Let's see if we, there we go. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah try it there. Yeah, because it works on here. Yeah, I corrected that bit, link. But yeah, yeah, I corrected that it. link earlier, and it still gave me issues. <coughs> oh, um, there we go. This yeah. is probably the number one or two page tied with census.gov, um, 2020census.gov, for um, – information and general resources uh, from the American Library Association. Um, there are Libraries Guide to the 2020 Census. That was just updated in January, so that's very new. But the newest one is um, Libraries and the 2020 Census Responding to the Census. That one is just a two-page tip sheet oh, nice. that you will find very valuable. Um, I thought that was a great way. It's short, uh, to the point, has lots of great tips. And then um, the next one from that page that I wanted to mention is, <clears throat> nope, that's not, that was, yeah, not it. Yeah, that is actually a webinar that was, um, but that was very useful, kind of in the beginning stages of this, and it's still good if you want to listen to it. But more uh, current information, um, and there is uh, American Libraries Live, Libraries in the Census. That's also another webinar that uh, is more current. It's only a week old, mm -hmm. and uh, so you might want to listen to yeah, that to see what. That, yeah. um, American Library, uh, what ALA and the Census Bureau and other libraries around the country are doing you know, for this. <clears throat> and 
And, you know, I apologize that I'm going through this very quickly, but um, there's a lot of information to cover. I, I I'm mainly just want to make sure um, that uh, you know where the resources are and how to access them. Um, one of the other things that you can do, and in fact, this is what most libraries around the country are doing, is try to dedicate temporarily at least mm -hmm. one computer mm -hmm. in your library uh, for people to come in and do their census questionnaire on. Um, and it will need to be connected to my2020census.gov um, or just the, or, and probably the 2020census.gov websites. Uh, the My2020 is, is to the questionnaire itself. Um, and then the 2020 census is the general one. But if you can uh, have at least one computer, um, if not, and I realize that a lot of libraries are very small, they don't have very many communities, mm -hmm. uh, very many computers, uh, but uh, if you expect a lot of people to come in, it will make things go more smoothly, flow more smoothly, if you can have one computer that's just for the census itself. Uh, Especially largely, when they start getting those postcards and, and yes. start coming in and like yes. Yes. all at the same time. Because this isn't going to be like a, you know, tax season is months and months of people coming oh, in. Yes. This exactly. is going to be yeah. Yeah. this There's, week, next week. Yes, They're exactly. Gonna say, oh, I have <laughs> yeah, we essentially have about a month starting mm. tomorrow uh, where the big push for really people, yeah, yeah. Uh, of people answering is going to be. So, um <clears throat> yeah, you may see a, a starting tomorrow, might see a, a an influx of people. So if you can have a computer um, set up just for the census, that w would help a lot. If you can't, totally understand, but make sure that they can get to my2020census.gov very easily. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is we do understand that not all of your patrons coming in to do the census um, ha will have library cards for your library. And no. so that was the mm -hmm. other thing that was suggested is if you can, uh, when they come in, if they don't have a library card and they're eligible for one, sign them up, you yeah. know, and that's a great way to get new patrons, Absolutely. you know, uh, permanent patrons. <laughs> but if they don't, uh, then give them a guest pass uh, and then direct them to the uh, computer that is just for the census. Um, this would be one of those case situations where you 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 must you need to have a special case where you waive the rules. Yes, exactly. This is something yes. that is required by law for yes. everyone to do, and this is one of those. You know, normally we say local procedures or policies are mm -hmm. local and do what you want. This is kind of the opposite. Yes. Let them in. Let them use the computer. Figure out a way to get everyone on to right. do this. Um, um, no matter what, and then you know, sneakily get them a library card too and benefit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> um, and the other thing too is, especially if uh, for the larger libraries, if you have regular computers, but then you also have some like 15 minute, 30 minute express computers set up, mm -hmm. you could dedicate maybe one or two of those um, just to do in the census. Sure. You know, so it just depends on the size of your library as to what you can do. But if at all possible, figure out a way to make it easy mm -hmm. for people to use your computers to uh, do their questionnaire online. Yeah. You know, be that, aware that over the next month, yeah. this is going to be the time when you need to be as open yes, and, and absolutely. As accessible as possible. Yes, I, yeah. absolutely. I could not have said it better. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, um, maybe bookmark the My 2020 Census and the 2020census.gov um, uh, on the computer uh, so that it makes it real easy for them to get there. Um, the other thing at, that I mentioned before that I wanted to definitely emphasize is when people are concerned about the security of their information, mm -hmm. please reassure your patrons that their information is safe regardless of what method they use, whether it's the online, mail, phone, it is protected. It is protected by federal law that uh, this information will be used in a safe manner. So, uh, and it will not, as far as, mm -hmm. as best can be, you know, um, assured, um, it will not be hacked. You know? 
Um, then uh, the other things that your library staff can do is just direct people to their response options. Uh, print out one of the handouts from either the ALA.org census or from um, the 2020census.gov as to what their options are. If they don't want to do that uh, mail-in card that they got with the code on it, they can wait for a, a mail um, a mail card. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to do that, then they'll end up, uh, or they could do it by phone. Um, but eventually, they're going to need to do it. So, you know, give them options, but mm -hmm. stress online is fast, and then you're done. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have to wait anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they can get it done. Um, also, be familiar with free, frequently asked questions, and this was from the um, 2020census.gov. And our mouse is yeah, our mouse is yeah, weird sometimes. But um, at the top of the uh, census. 2020census.gov, um, there is an about. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Touchy mouse this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but if you have to go to the main page, it's up at the top under mm -hmm. uh, in one of the drop down menus. And then, uh, yeah. And these are some of the things uh, that are asked on this, the questionnaire itself. So that's you know? nice. I think a yes. lot of people would wonder, like, ahead of time, what do I need to know to yes. answer these questions? Yes. What so they can be prepared with to have the information already. Right. Yeah. And uh, if you'll stop there, Ooh. this is one yeah. of the things that you could print out because nice. it's in English and Spanish. And I think maybe I posted this early on in one of my blog posts about the census. Um, but this is a sample copy of the census questionnaire nice. that you could print out so that if people do ask, um, what all is going to be on this? You know, mm -hmm. um, you can print it out and, and give it to them. So okay. this is a good handout. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it was because it was on there. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think so. Um, the other thing that I thought was super cool when I was going through all of this <laughs> instant, uh, census information was the questionnaire guides and the video guides. Now, yeah. the questionnaire guides, I didn't actually go through and count them. But they say that there are 59 mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. language That's guides. Awesome. I, was I like, saw that at the bottom yeah. of the census page, the My 2020 yeah. census, I think it says, yeah, it has a whole bunch of links of all different languages. Yeah, yeah. exactly. English, yeah, Spanish, and Vietnamese, uh, which I thought was Russian. Really cool. And that's just Arabic. a fraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's just a fraction. Um, they, and the reason I scrolled down through the whole list is because they also have a nice. large print so that if you have some uh, visually challenged patrons, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a large print guide, and then there's also a Braille guide mm -hmm. and American Sign, Sign Language, language you know, awesome. which I thought was just awesome. Yeah. And um, there are, uh, like I said, uh, download downloadable language guides. Um, and to, there's a more language. And then well the more languages. Yeah, okay, cool. exactly. So English and Spanish, I think, are probably the most common. Sure. Um, but um, it's good to know they've got some of those like Vietnamese. But I know here in Nebraska we have a lot of um, people from different Asian countries yes, that are that, that are, have their, their different yes. pockets of um, communities. Yeah, that's yes. very common here. Yeah. Now the other one um, is video guides, and I hope this one comes up. This is actually YouTube. Welcome and to 2020 <laughs> There we go. Uh, we don't need to listen to the whole yeah. thing, but the nice, the first one that pops up is obviously in English. But if you scroll over to the side, there's all of the languages. Oh, nice. And okay. just for fun this morning, I counted, and there are 63 oh. languages listed uh -huh. there. Include, um, wow. so, well, no, 61. Um, including and 63, including English and uh, American Sign Language. Mm -hmm. So, right. if you need someone to actually visually see one of these guides mm -hmm. uh, because maybe they are deaf and need American Sign Language, there's one for them too. Yeah. You know, so I was very That's impressed right. by yeah. some of the resources. They've translated it into so many different languages. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's been great. Um, the other thing, um, and this just kind of goes back to how library staff can help patrons 
Um, once they get to the questionnaire, um, to the my, my2020census.gov, um, you can help them navigate the pages online. Uh, but the one thing that I do want to stress is if someone has little to zero computer experience, mm. this might not be the best way for them. You might encourage, yes. <coughs> excuse me, you might encourage them to do the mail-in form. The paper form, you know, yeah. Uh, because to be honest, in order to ensure privacy and security, um, it's not recommended that librarians do the form for them. Mm. And that's very important. This is something that a lot of us deal with. Um, I'm sure you've dealt with it with other things. Can you help me just complete my tax forms? Can you help me fill out this medical form? Yes. Or this thing for my lawyer? And the answer is always no, no, yes. no, no, no. no. Yes. I, it is illegal and I won't do it. I yes. can help you navigate it. I can yes. show you where to click. Yes. But I can't sit down and do it for you because that's, that's a whole breach of of confidentiality yes, and yes. security and in some and cases, privacy, privacy yes. and in some cases potentially illegal. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, that was the one thing yes. um, that I came across this morning again was, you know, don't do it for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. um, now, if they have, and it's good, and, you know, sometimes though they're scared in those situations, it's the only way I can apply for this job or do this thing and you've uh -huh. just got to make them do it, push them through. Yes. This one at least you've got that paper option. Yes, so, that you know is what? correct. It's okay. Yeah. Wait yep. a couple of weeks, you'll get a thing in the mail, yeah. no problem, and that's a perfectly acceptable way right. to do it. You're all good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Comfort them, and take them over to your books and your magazines or whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is an option to that, though. Um, mm -hmm. Librarians are not allowed to, do, to, to fill out the forms for them, mm -hmm. but if they want to bring in a family member, you know, okay. who's sure. part of that household and, you know, is going to know this information sure. anyway Anyone to in be mouth. with yeah. them while they fill it out, mm -hmm. um, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. But, um, you know, librarians are not no. allowed to do this for them. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Oh, and here's our page of resources. Um, and I do apologize that some of the links didn't work well this morning, but the two biggest ones, like I mentioned over and over, are the ALA and the Census, which is mm -hmm. ALA.org slash census mm -hmm. and the 2020census.gov. Um, right. The My 2020 Census is the questionnaire itself. Um, the responding to the census is that two-page handout um, or uh, PDF that you can go to for tips on, you know, things that mm -hmm. you can be doing. Um, the library's guide to the 2020 census is, uh, was put out by ALA, uh, American Library Association, and it will help you uh, with even more. It's an extended version of that responding to the census. So um, the responding to would be one you'd maybe give out to your patrons. Staff. staff. Or, oh, your staff. Yeah, okay. that, that's staff. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, no, I'm talking about, so the library's guide would be for the staff, but the responding to would be something you'd give to people? Oh. The two-page one? Actually, or? no, I think that is still more for the library. Oh, themselves. okay. Because it comes from ALA, right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and it was, it, I, if I remember correctly, it was tips on how to direct your people to, or your patrons to respond, you know. But mm -hmm. then Library's Guide to the 2020 Census, um, again, the census form, frequently asked questions, the language guides, the language videos, um, and all of these links should work once you actually pull this up on yeah, our website. Yeah, yeah. And the links then, are all in there. We're, we're having personal issues with this one particular PC. Don't worry about yes. it. Yes. When you get this PowerPoint, you'll be able to click on all these, and it will go to all the appropriate places yes, for you. That's correct. Yeah. And if someone is truly interested in uh, a job with the 2020 census, mm -hmm. um, there's the link mm -hmm. for that. And then there is also a contact for the U.S. Census Bureau if you're having issues um, and also, too, uh, that contact page lists number a, a telephone number for the hearing impaired. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, lots of resources there. Those first mm -hmm. three are probably going to be your most important ones. Um, but again, I'm going to say your number one task at this point is just making sure people can get on a computer. Uh, when they come in with their card, with the code, to do their census questionnaire online. That's probably your number one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
but in the meantime, you know, as you're waiting, you know, for the next wave, you can definitely go through all of these resources. Uh, make sure you and your staff are familiar with them, and um, you should not have any problems. Mm -hmm. It's a very straightforward process. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very. It sounds. I'm excited to go in and do it and answer my I questions. Am too, I actually. I always yes. thought. I don't know why. Whenever you get the census forms every ten years, I thought it was fun to you know go in and answer all my questions and uh, sure. you know, or with my family when I was younger with my mom and dad and right and just make sure you get all that in and send it in. Do this big thing for. I mean, I was kind of the opposite, I guess, of some people. Like, I don't want to send this thing to the big government. Like, no, I want to. It's cool. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've been. Maybe I'm a STEM person. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's part of it. I like to look at numbers. Sure. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So, yeah. Well, the um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, it, it's it's they've made it as easy as possible. You know, especially mm -hmm. for the online version, and um, it's just. So important, you know, to get these numbers right. Um, that uh, I can't emphasize that enough to, mm -hmm. you know, try to market as much as possible within your library, uh, within your community. Work with your community leaders to make sure you're getting the word out. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, librarians are usually so in tune with their communities and their community populations yeah. that uh, they know, um, you know, who, which areas of town might, you know, be a problem, you know, to get everybody to come in, uh, which patrons might be, you know, problematic. And uh, so it, it's just really important for us as librarians to get the word out. And mm -hmm. um, hopefully these resources uh, will be helpful. Um, they're definitely contact information, and you know if there's something that you're looking for that you can't find, um, please um, give me a call. Yeah. I will be happy to help as much as I can and uh, point you in the right direction. Yeah. As you know, as she meant, Mary mentioned from her blog post, she's been doing for a few weeks on this. She has been pretty deep into this. Um, probably more than in other people already <laughs> with putting out the, pushing out the information and exploring all these pages. So if there's something that you maybe are you think that should be there and you're trying to find it, she more <laughs> more than anyone else has probably come across it. Somewhere. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. In fact, yeah. I'm going to be putting some updated documents out this morning on the uh, main uh, the Nebraska Library Commission main page. Mm -hmm. uh, so look for that blog post. Um, just some updated documents from you know what uh, has been released previously mm -hmm. and um, you know just glance through them make sure you've got all your bases covered if, if necessary and you know just the big thing is just be familiar yeah. you know make with, yourself familiar yeah. with it before yeah, yeah before exactly. you're um, before you get lots of questions yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly so yeah all right, so does anybody have any questions right now? Any other questions? You guys have typed in some earlier as we were talking, and I, I pulled them out and, and um, mentioned them. So um, if you want to desperately need to ask something right away, um, please do type in. Um, so I think this is great. I'm glad we were able to get this onto the show and get yeah, the information yeah. out there for you guys. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, timely, right, the week when this is all Absolutely. starting. Absolutely. Yeah. It all starts so, tomorrow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. And thank you, Krista, for having me on. Yeah, of course. I appreciate it. Um, so by the end of the day today, the recording should be up as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate <laughs> yes. with me. <laughs> um, you'll, have, and, um, you'll have that and the slides. We'll post them up as well. Um, everyone who attended this morning and everyone who pre-registered for today's show will get the email from me because I'll have your info. Um, and we'll also push it out to our various um, social media, mm -hmm. as right. usual places we do, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, mailing list. And one more um, comment, if you get to the slides on our website and there is a link that doesn't uh, work, call me or email me and yeah. I'll point you in the right direction. <coughs> Let so, me right. know when you yeah. can um, fix it or yeah, yes, tell you absolutely. where they might have moved yeah. something because, you know, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I did fix a bunch of them this morning, but obviously they were still glitchy. So yeah. And as you said, they're putting, coming out with new documents all the time. Anyway, yes, new, yes so that's correct. Things may change. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, we do have a question, which is a good question, and I bet you the answer is the last thing on your previous slide. <laughs> but what do we do about people who don't receive a card in the mail that were, say they don't receive that little code card? Oh. Would that be the contact may, the U.S. Census Bureau well, for support? Well, um, I would wait 
um, until maybe and see if maybe they get a mail in form mm -hmm. because that will be the next wave. True. Yeah. Yeah. The card in the mail first will be the one with the code to do the to respond to the questionnaire online. The next wave will be the mail out form. Right. So if you don't so, do that, then they'll send you the paper yes, one automatically. Right. Yes, that's correct. So if they don't get the card with the code, it just means don't you won't be able to do it online. Sorry, wait a yes. week or two. Probably whenever, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks and right. you'll get the yes. paper one anyways. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Because they'll notice that you didn't do the, your household didn't do the online one. Yes. That's now, right. hopefully, that will get to you because it's yes. an address issue. <laughs> yes. Uh, if that doesn't come, then yeah. Now, yeah. if if yeah. they don't get one by the end of April, then I would call the number at the bottom there to contact the U.S. Census Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, I would contact them and say I did not get one. Didn't get the uh, card, and I didn't get I the didn't, paper form. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, they hopefully they will be able. To, and and at that mm -hmm. point, they would probably have to verify some information like an mm -hmm. address. You know, but uh, yes, you should be able to contact them if you don't get a form yeah. in, uh, in some way. Wait till April's over so, so they've pushed everything out that yes. they possibly can. Exactly. And then, yes. yeah, look for it. So, so, so when it, you're talking about that deadline people were talking about, that might be <coughs> a, a way to consider it. If you yes. haven't received something by the end of April, that would be your time to reach out to the census yourself, the individuals, to say, okay, I didn't receive anything and I want to do this. Yes, um, exactly. So I would up, say, yeah. You know, you're right, end of April would yeah. be a good deadline. Deadline type thing, yeah. I think of mm -hmm. it that way, yeah. Cool. All right, any other last minute questions? We just hit 11.01, so we're gonna, you know, start our hour for Encompass Live. Um, so I think we'll wrap it up if nobody has anything extra special, desperate you need to ask right now. <laughs> you get your question, you have a chance to get a few minutes more while I wrap things up for our show. So let's. Um, yeah, so let's, let's get out of here to escape, and we'll see if we can successfully get to. Oh, that's that one that popped up. Oh, right. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Things do pop up eventually. All right. And we try to escape. Yeah. All right. So, um, as I said, we will um, get things uh, loaded up our archives there. Um, Encompass Live, you can go to our commission website and search for Encompass Live or. Oh, wait, no. Um, at whatever is your search engine of choice, if I can get into here, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, it doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Ha, yeah. okay, <laughs> I made it. All right, we have wireless down here. Some things might need a new battery. <laughs> but if you just type Encompass Live into anything so far, we're the only thing called that on the internet. Yes. Yeah. So you will find our page um, if your mouse works. Uh, ah, all right. So this is where we have our upcoming shows, and then right underneath there is a link for our archives. Yeah. And this is where our um, all of our archives are. Our most recent shows are at the top. So today's show will be here at the top of the list by the end of the day today. There'll be a link, as I said, to our YouTube recording, and it's linked to the uh, hand the uh, slides. While I'm here, I'll show you there is a search feature, so you can search all of our archives of our shows here. You can do the full archives or just most recent 12 months, and that is because this is the archive, if I scroll all the way down, which I won't, for the entire history of Encompass Live. Our first show was in January 2009, so we're on a, wow. yeah, 10, 11 years, whatever the math is. But everything has a date with a year and everything, so pay attention when you're searching the full archives of when a show was originally broadcast. Um, Services or products might no longer exist anymore. They may have changed. Uh, URLs may have moved, as we were maybe discovering here. Um, so do pay attention to it. Certain things are eternal, you know, work reading lists and things. But um, some things may be totally different, and some of the information may be old, outdated, or links may be broken and whatnot. Just pay attention when you're in here to uh, the date of when something was originally broadcast, if you are going to. Uh, look at or watch an archive recording. But we are librarians and that's what we do. We archive historical things. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Mary does that a lot in her job. So we'll <laughs> always keep all our full archive up there for you as long as YouTube will host it um, or we'll have some more. Yes, <laughs> it's there somewhere. It'll always be somewhere. Yeah. We do have a website or a Facebook page also for Encompass Live. If you do like to use Facebook, we post reminders over there. 
pushing out information about today's show um, when the recording is available. So um, if you do like use Facebook, give us a like over there and you'll hear from us a couple of times a week. Uh, so that will be for today's record. Oh, we have a thanks. Happy counting. Yes. Yeah. Happy counting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and just one more thing. April 1st is the official census day. Mm -hmm. And so that's the date that uh, the questionnaire will ask um, how many people living in your household on April 1st. Yeah. That yes. So yes. that's the, that mm -hmm. is the official mm -hmm. census day. Yeah. So coming yeah, up. Yeah. 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 So that will be for our archive. So I hope you join us on our future show. And next week we have, and just added, if you didn't see this before, Teen Summer Camp, uh, Challenging Traditional Programming for Teens. Uh, this is a session, this is going to be our show for next week, so just sign up for that. Uh, Molly Garrett, she's a librarian <clears throat> across the river from Nebraska, Cedar <laughs> in, in Iowa, Cedar Rapids Public Library, um, and they've done some teen summer camps. And so she's going to come on the show with us next week remotely and talk about that. So please do join us for next week's show or any of the other shows we have here. We've got April all all um, filled in here. I think I've got, oh, yeah. And um, as I get things scheduled for May in the future, you'll see them start appearing on the yep. calendar. So keep an eye on that. Other than that, thank you much for attending, everyone. Thank you so much, Mary, yep, for coming in you. here with me today and talking about this. I'm glad we got this info out to you. And we will see you another time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.